Good evening, I'm MB Torres. I'm here to talk about homes now in tiny home villages. And I'm going to read my notes because I get very nervous talking in front of all these people. So I'm just gonna read it. Um, homes now has brought us as a community a new perspective on getting people housed in traditional housing. With the housing crisis this community is experiencing, the fact that a volunteer group has been able to make this tiny home community work with astounding success is to be commended. In fact, should be looked to as a model for the city and county to be implemented as a tool to getting people off the streets. With allegations surrounding the former president of Homes Now, many nonprofit, volunteer only run organizations, organizations would have buckled and ceased to exist. Homes Now and its many community volunteers have come back stronger. This community is willing to see this nonprofit, Homes Now, through the issues it has experienced and continue to watch and help it grow. The city has generously granted Homes Now land to temporarily use for their tiny home village, starting right here in the parking lot behind us with tents. Moving to a parking lot off Alabama and Texas streets in the Sunnyland neighborhood, and currently at Fairhaven with tiny homes constructed by community volunteers and neighbors. Through th these moves, lessons have been learned, tiny houses have been constructed, a community has evolved. I've been advised that the city has put in their temporary lease that a renewal is not possible at the current location in Fairhaven. I don't expect the city to go against their word to the residents of the Fairhaven community. As the tiny home village has learned valuable lessons as they grow and move, I do expect the city to do the same. Homes Now has shown they are respectful of the land, of the community, of the neighborhoods they have been in. I do expect the city, as the tiny home community is set to move yet again, for no other reason than a clause that was written into a land lease agreement to extend another lease in another location. I do expect the city to review their policies on these tiny home communities, making it possible for more to be constructed. I do expect the city to take a hard look at the homeless issue we have, the housing crisis we are in, the affordability of available housing, and the solution that Homes Now is actively offering. I, as a citizen of Bellingham, expect my city to take note of all the people that live here, even the ones that are unsheltered. And when a solution is offered up and proven to work, I expect the city to step up and see what they can do to make this tiny home concept more attainable. Homes Now needs land. Please consider leasing Homes Now some land for their future site of tiny homes. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, um, this is Doug, um, Homes, Now, Homes Now Chairman. Um, I just wanted to say uh, thank, thank you to the city, thank you council members, thank you to the mayor, to Chief Dahl, to Rick Sepler. We've, it's been good to work with you guys over the years. Um, I know that Homes Now uh, uh, has only been around for, it, Homes Now has only been around for two years and we went from nothing to Unity Village in that time. Um, I know that we have a colorful history. I know that um, we th there are allegations related to the former president um, financially, um, but I would ask you to also look at the results that we've been able to achieve. We've been able to we've been able to permanently house uh, f or get 14 people permanently housed while they were staying at Unity Village. Um, anyone who hasn't been to Unity Village should go check it out in Fairhaven and see the model. It costs, the whole operation of 20 tiny homes, once you've built the tiny homes, um, is around $1,200 a month to operate the entire site. And this gets 20 people, or potentially 28 people if there's double occupancy in some of them, off the streets in a stable spot and has over a 30% rehousing rate. Homes Now's purpose is to end homelessness one person at a time. So every single person, when they became homeless, they became homeless for a different reason. Some, some, some people, it's the traditional mental health, drug issues. Some people, it's that they're escaping domestic violence. Some people, is that they got a medical bill they couldn't pay. Some people, um, they can't find work. Um, some people, they're, hous they're on a housing list and it's been five years and it hasn't gone through. So we're, we're trying to provide a very cost-effective, safe spot for them to be um, 
so that people can move on with their lives. And we, we, I think the results speak for themselves. Um, we are proposing the clean green site, but you know, on, Wo on the intersection of Woburn and Lakeway. Um, we're open to other sites too. It's not like we've got our heart set on that site. We, we know it's not just the city's job and we know the city has granted us the other sites before and, and we plan to approach the county and we plan to approach the port. But just because it's not just, and the city's right that it's not just their job, but just because it's not just your guys' job, I think that um, it would still be beneficial to solve this problem because what's the goal, right? His citizens of the city want to see problem solving. They want to see that something got better, that it's not worse next year and the year after that. They want to see that it's better next year and the year after that. And so Homes Now is a part of that. We're not, we're, we're not the solution to every problem, but we are part of the solution. And hell, if you want someone else to use the same site and do the same thing to help 20 people, then by all means, go for it. That's what we, we just want this problem solved and we want to be part of the solution and we want to maintain our partnership with you guys. Um, into the future and expand with future sites. So please consider it. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, esteemed council. Uh, my name is Marcus D. Stidham. I am the program director with Homes Now, as well as I s sit on the Homeless Strategies Work Group uh, that Whatcom County has. I was put there in a six to one vote by Whatcom County Council as homeless advocate for Whatcom County. In, in the time that I was there, I actually did not represent Homes Now, but I was into my knowledge of Homes Now, rather intimate knowledge of Homes Now, uh, let me answer a lot of questions within that work group. And one thing that kept on coming obvious to me within the work group was that this particular model, which I did not represent at the time, was the winningest sheltering by far in Bellingham in Whatcom County, uh, with uh, one-third of the people coming through to get it permanently rehoused with a $2 a day per person, real cost, for people to come into a, to, to, into a tiny home, lock a door, or in most cases, just not. Put your stuff down because you're in a gated community and you trust everybody in here. Share a kitchen, uh, share duties. Uh, reintegrate into society in a really large way. A lot of these people are, are getting their documents with us and, get, and getting a lot of uh, other outreach. We just don't put them into a house and let them sit there. We, we try to help them figure out what their goals are and, and help them achieve their goals. The Clean Green site would be a great site to be able to work from. It's, it's, it's visible uh, here to our, to, to our community to see it. I tell you, anybody who wants to come down and visit, Unity Village, it is an example of community, a fine example of community within our community. Maybe one of the finest examples of community I've seen. How many people know their neighbors anymore? Everybody knows their neighbors in there. It's great. Come down and visit. Come and see how it really works. It's representative of the old community that built Whatcom County. I know that, we've, that, the, that the city has been very um, helpful, and, and I'm very, very thankful for that. We've come through a lot of changes recently, some challenges, setbacks on what Homes Now's goals and, and schedule might otherwise have been. I'm asking for a little more consideration for if, you, if we can get another site up, that'd be great. It takes a lot of time once you, it takes a couple months easily to once, you, once you apply for a permit to actually get possession of the site. So the, so the clock is actually burning on us because we gotta be out of Fairhaven by April. So uh, I'm just asking for the, for the consideration. No, it's, it, it, it's not up to the city to take the entire burden, and other, other government agencies can take it. But I'm asking for uh, one more hand up in good faith, in good partnership, and, and I promise we'll really show you how this is supposed to have been run, okay? And, so, and, and, and the, the, the residents are just so happy in there right now. We've, we've, we've just really turned a corner, and we'd love an opportunity to show this community what we can do. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we'll resume public comment after the uh, normal city business has been uh, concluded. Um, mayor's report. Brian Heinrich, Mayor's Office. Um, I know that uh, Mayor Kelly's home. She's not feeling well. She's watching, though, however, she did share that with me. Um, I did want to address just quickly maybe a couple comments and echo comments that were just made around the city's role in finding another uh, location for homes now. I, this administration certainly agrees it's not the city's role alone. The mayor has worked with 
our colleagues across the street and down at the port on finding another site. And I think that's where, um, that's where we're at right now. As, it, as stated, they have the existing uh, location in Fairhaven through April of 2020. Um, and uh, part, of, part of that permit is that it uh, precludes adding an extension. So um, I just wanted to get that out there and, and echo those comments that were made. Um, with respect to uh, the rest of the mayor's report, there are three appointments that need approval. Uh, and one The next three speakers <clears throat> are David Morris, Darcy Allen, and Edradine Ho Hovdry. Hello, um, I'm David Morris. I'm one of the residents at Homes now. Um, I, I see this program as really changing people's lives. It's helping move people forward. And I, I'd like to just propose the consideration for having a clean green site so that we can get together and get this moving because it takes a lot of work to get this site moved to. And that's all I got to say. I'm short and sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So my name's Gina Estrada, and I'm here just simply because I received a postcard in the mail about the Climate Action Task Force. I don't know a lot about it other than there is some um, information out there about in about that there's going to be a timeline on when people or residents are going to um, have to convert from gas to electricity. And so my question is, for those who we're talking a lot about people who are needing housing, um, my concern is there might be a lot of people who are unable to, within that time frame, uh, meet those deadlines. And if they're unable to, then they might join those who are on the streets already. And so I, I'm, I'm concerned because I don't know how many people are here about this particular thing. Um, the task force, but it makes me wonder how many people in the community really are aware of it and what their thoughts are and whether or not they can budget for this and if they know when to start budgeting so that if it's mandated, if it goes through, that they'll really be able to do it. So I'm just here to inform you that I, I don't know if your communication is really working and getting the message out because I don't, I would think more people might be here concerned about that. We do have a lot of people who are on fixed incomes and they've um, lived in Bellingham for many years and when you get to a point where you don't have an income coming in, then you're living budget to budget and a lot of your Medicaid, a lot of your money goes for food and for um, um, your pharmaceuticals and they're limited on making adjustments to their home in a, in a short time frame. And then in addition to that, it seems like there should be a, a grandfathering in deal, kind of like what we do with old cars. With old cars, they're still on the freeway, but they give off a lot of exhaust. So with the older homes, for those who can't, um, they're on a budget and they're unable to make that change. It seems like they should be grandfathered in and with the new buildings, with all the new revisions happening, we certainly want to make Bellingham more green. We want to support that. We want to um, protect our, our land. but we don't want more people out on the streets, or I'm, in my opinion, we don't want more people out on the streets. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Aaron Booker, and um, I'm here to talk about the Climate Action Task, there's TAPF, uh, anyway, it's lots of, lots of acronym there. Um, so I, my concern is facts, and so I've been doing quite a bit of research as well as reading the notes from the uh, task force. And so the biggest concern that I have is that we're really aiming at a small portion of the, uh, with what I'm reading. And so um, I'm just looking here at the December report from the state, um, about 18% of our of our natural of our uh, emissions come from electricity up from 15% in 2012 and transportation is uh, over 40% up slightly and actually residential cons um, uh, and industrial uses are are down in the 20% um, range and they're flat 
So let's aim at the big portion, which is transportation. So if we require electrical car chargers, I own an electric car, second one. Um, I had solar panels on my house, and despite what <laughs> is said, uh, I bought them in 2002. They had about a 10-year life because I got a new roof, and it, the cost to get them put back up and taken down was prohibitive, so I have a nice inverter that's not doing anything. Um, but let's just focus on what really moves the needle, and, and transportation is the biggest one. And let's, let's make recommendations about new construction. Great. But existing construction, we're going to skyrocket taxes because, yes, it's based on when you sell a house and there's all of this fantasy, in my opinion, about how that's going to work. Um, but immediately, house prices will all go up to, to adjust to the reality of, of all of this new expense, and, which means taxes go up, which means if you're homeless, you are more likely to join those ranks if you're on fixed income. So I feel pretty passionate about it because I've been down the road of participating in processes before and it's been pretty ugly. I really think we need to be filling the Bellingham High School, Whatcom Community College, Westerns here, educate, educate, educate. Making fast action is going to really upset people, really, really upset people. Also just want to point out PSE, where we're going to get this electricity from. Currently 38% comes from coal. 38%. 33% from hydroelectric. Hydroelectric has a, uh, there's some questions, especially around salmon. Will we continue to have as much hydroelectric? Natural gas, 21%. Not much left there for renewables. Okay, so moving everything to electricity hastily is really not a wise move in the long run. Let's let technology catch up. Technology will catch up. Thank you. Hello, my name is Justina Owens, and I'm here for Homes Now. I'm one of the new tenants that just moved in recently, one of the three new tenants. And I just want to say that it's like a family there. I was, op I was welcomed with open arms, and I really think that it's a great thing that people are doing for us there and the community. I hope that um, you guys have a new site for us soon, and uh, I really think that it will work. I really am very comfortable there. I feel like I have a new little family too. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Next three speakers are uh, Jonathan Jackson, Lynette Allen, Joseph McDonald. Last one is Jacob Peterson. Okay. That concludes the list after that. Hi there, my name is Jonathan Jackson, and uh, I'm a resident uh, off of Old Wilburn, right next to uh, Lakeway and Wilburn there. And just in regards to uh, the clean green uh, site, you know, uh, potentially being available for homes now, um, I, I love the idea. As I've learned more about the organization, uh, the passionate people that are involved with it, um, you know, and just addressing, you know, just places for people to be, to stay warm, to have a community, uh, I, think it's, I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, I have five kids and a wife, and um, you know we we feel really comfortable and excited for you know the opportunity that that could be a reality. So I, I strongly urge, uh, yeah, uh, movement on finding a site, uh, any site, but definitely uh, you know as as somebody who's right up the street, um, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lynette Allen. Um, <laughs> well, I want to say, basically, I agree with everything that's been said about Homes Now so far from Doug, from uh, Marcus, and from um, David Morse, and I'm for the clean green area uh, happening, and I want to say that Bellingham has a chance to be pretty unique in this whole Hopes Now thing that's happening. And um, I hope you'll take that opportunity to uh, support it, keep it going. I really like what's happened with the um, homeless um, strategies work group. I think that's a something that it's brought a lot of the 
folks together that help the homeless. And um, a lot of people have learned a lot from each other and been able to help uh, much more because of that. And I hope that continues. Um, last time I was there, um, this last meeting, uh, Emily from uh, Lydia Place spoke. I learned so much from her. She um, really has an insight into what works. Uh, and she really, um, well, I was impressed with what she had to say. I love the fact that she stressed prevention. She's had a chance to learn, and she knows what she's talking about. Uh, so that's my uh, idea, too. More prevention, more one-on-one -on -one advocacy, and more communication out to the homeless people. They're not getting the message. Uh, it's not, a lot of times they just don't know what's going on. A lot of them. A lot of them do, but some of them don't. But they're at homes now, they have more of a chance of knowing it. Um, and some places they do. But if they're just out there on the street, and uh, uh, a lot of times they really don't have a, a clue what all is available. And I would like the city and the county to step up and um, have more communication out there, more information out there to the people who need it. Maybe it's like at Maple Alley Inn, just a whiteboard that says what is possible. Something like that, something simple. Thank you. Thank you.